Good morning. Jesus foretells the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will teach and cause those who believe to remember what Jesus said. Jesus' promise is joined with the assurance of peace. In the, in the midst of believing, the peace we receive will not be of this world. It will be the counsel of the Holy Spirit who will make the, world, the word of Jesus penetratingly clear. I invite you to stand with us as we sing our opening song, The Father's House. Please be seated. 
As we join in this time of worship, may you know indeed that you can let the shame, the struggles go, that you are considered loved and whole and totally worthy through Christ for God. And we are glad that you are here to worship with us. As we start this morning, I invite you to join me in responsively the call to worship. God, be gracious to us and bless us. Make your face to shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. Whoops. Now, yeah. The earth has yielded its increase, my God. May God continue to bless you. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let us worship God together. Will the kids, will Wilson come on down? Carla, I think, has a story to tell you. Maybe Mary Kay will come with you. are more comfy. <laughs> oh. That's Oh, goodness. So, Wilson, I bet you know what holiday is coming up. Do you know what's coming? What? What? What's coming up? Halloween. Do you like Halloween? I think there's scary things in Halloween. Do you? What kind of scary things? Ghosts and bats. I think they're in monsters and witches. Are they scary? Yeah? I have something. I want to see if you think it's scary or not. Boo! Is it scary? It is. Because it, why? Because it's a ghost. And ghosts are scary. But do you think ghosts are real? No, they're not. No, they're not. Right, they're just Halloween costumes. So, Jesus tells us today that we're not supposed to be afraid. Right, we're not supposed to be scared. You know why? Why? Because God loves us so much. Right, and these aren't very real, are they? These aren't real. But he tells us today that God's love is real. So he says, don't be afraid. Don't let your heart be afraid because his love is real. Right. You ready to pray? Okay. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful day. Help us to remember not to be afraid because your love is real. As we continue worship today, we're, uh, we'll go into our next song, Cornerstone. I invite you to stand and sing with us. Built on nothing. 
sweetest frame but holy trust in Jesus name my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the same
the shallows amidst fear and fog. Your truth is a compass that points me back north. Jesus, my captain, my soul's trust and Lord. All my allegiance is rightful. Please be seated. I think one of those things that hit me when I was in seminary of, is the word amen just means you agree. So that's some of the reason why amen is a response to a song that touches your heart and you agree with what it says. Amen can be the response to a lot of things. Clapping is also an amen, isn't it? Y'all get quiet really quick. What? I like people to talk back. Um, <laughs> so as we enter this time of prayer, I thought, I've come to this a couple times. I shifted the way we pray with me doing a pastoral prayer having Dominic list the names. We've always had the quiet time and then closing with the Lord's Prayer because one of the things for me is the power of prayer sometimes isn't just in the things that I ask for God to do for me and judging whether he loves me enough to do those things or not. It is in the sense of opening myself up to God in a bigger way for the bigger parts of life, all of life and all of our world and it's also in that quiet. I always love the quiet. I love that that's been your tradition. The quiet is that place where God can talk to us. And, but I think it's also still important that we lift up the people that we are praying for because Scripture does say when we come together and pray with one voice, God is listening. He's also listening when we're alone in our closet. But uh, let us enter into prayer together. Amazing and loving God, as we open our hearts to you, help us let go of the pain, the anger, and fear. We hold on to as if it were ours to overcome. 
Fill us with your peace, that even as we struggle with giants or stand face to face with our greatest fears, we never forget you have already won this battle, and we can trust in your power. As we let go in trust, help us to focus on the things that matter, the joy of loved ones, walking with one another and talking and living our faith in every corner of our lives. With the assurance you hold us in the palm of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Today we lift up in prayer, prayers for Marianne and her family, her sister Martha Daniels passed away this past week. Um, her two daughters were beside her as she were beside her. Um, prayers for, prayers of praise that her, Sue's mother is doing better. She is still tired, but her appetite is getting back. Prayers for Linda's sister and brother-in-law, Carolyn Lynn. Lynn's Alzheimer's is progressing. And prayers for the medical team that they find answers to keep him comfortable um, as Carol is making some tough decisions. Prayers for Hillary Sims as she is undergoing the last procedure of her reconstruction on her upper jaw and teeth. Also, prayers for Karen Larson. I received an update a couple days ago that she is actually doing better and uh, looking at going home sometime soon. Continued prayers for Eliana Cross, Marsha, Teresa Springer, Heather's dad, Donna Clements, Daniel, the Gregory and Mangles families, Brian, John, Carol Thompson, continued prayers for Amber Schmitz, Ada, Lois, Donald Vecchio, Gil Schroeder, and Florence Haas. As always, we lift up in prayer the people of Ukraine, our first responders and medical staff, our active military and law enforcement everywhere, our Bishop Ruben Sainz, Jr., our District Superintendent Chad Engelmeyer, Reverend Bethan Black, and I ask that we keep in our prayers all of us who make up this church as Maplewood. Let us now enter into a time of silent prayer.
Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to hear today's message, I invite you to listen to the words of this next song. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, he spoke to the dark and flashed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets born. If the stars are made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made. Every burning star, a single fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you say. Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. Stars are made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all my praises still fall shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion
God of salvation, you've chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created, the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lost your life so I could find it here. If you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart a billion different ways. Every precious one, a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times. But what measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind. Lots of reasons to say amen this morning. So the passage today is John chapter 14, verses 27 through 31. I leave you my peace, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world does, so don't let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going, but I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you should be happy that I am going back to the Father, because he is greater than I am. I have told you this now before it happens, so that when it happens, you will believe. I will not talk to you with you. I will not talk with you much longer, because the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father, so I do exactly what the Father has told me to do. Come now, let us go. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. So it's important as we listen to this passage where Jesus says, peace be with you, to understand the context and to understand that he's not just saying hi. He's not just saying have a good day. He's not just saying, I hope things go well for you in the next few days. He is giving the gift of his assurance. Not his assurance to us, but the assurance that he has had throughout his whole life and ministry. The assurance that he is following God's will, that he is walking the journey that God has called him to walk, and that he is not afraid. And the context of him giving that gift to his disciples, and thus to us, is that he has just told them, I'm going to die. You thought we were coming to Jerusalem so that I could take over the temple and sit on the throne. You thought that your assurance was that I was going to take power over this world in the way that you understand power, but I'm not. That's what he said to him. I'm not going to sit on the throne of this world. I'm going to sit on the throne in heaven. And think about how many of us like change. Or just like don't like things to go different than we thought they should. Tends to make us feel a little uneasy. In fact, some of the conversations we had is where conflict comes is that gap between what you expected to happen and what is happening. 
And all of a sudden you have a reaction to that. Usually not positive. Unless you get two scoops of ice cream instead of one. In this, Jesus is saying, there's a gap between what you expected to happen when we marched into Jerusalem and it seemed like such a great thing. Everybody was shouting praise to the king. Hallelujah. God has come. Everything's going to be fabulous. He has spent in the Gospel of John an extended period of time talking to them and saying goodbye. Preparing them for his leaving. And this is a continuation of that peace. He has just told them the Holy Spirit will come and continue to guide them and help them to know the truth and remember what he's told them, but he is going to be gone. And he said, here's what I give you. I give you my peace. But I don't give it as the world gives it. The world gives us peace conditionally. You know, today, as long as we do everything that we're supposed to and everybody likes us, we have peace. In the world in which we live, our, our social media post gets lots of likes, we have peace. That's how the world gives peace, conditionally, based on whether everything's perfect or not perfect. And the world continues to tell us, you'll get peace if, right, if you do things the way I tell you to. I read a quote from Jane Goodall. It said, it's easy to be a difficult woman. That's why there's so many of us. The reason it's easy to be a difficult woman because the world has had a lot of rules of what it means to be a good woman, doesn't it? And some of what you know or should notice from me is I purposely try to break all of those rules. I don't like boxes very much. Jesus says here, here's what I'm giving you is peace, my peace. And we know that this is a big deal because when he comes to the disciples after he's been resurrected, comes into that locked room where they're all going, now what? He's dead. We're in trouble. He walks into the room and does the same thing. He says, peace be with you. It's one of the reasons we pass the peace in church. It's not just a nice thing. It is about remembering that we've been given this huge gift that goes beyond the circumstances. Jesus' peace isn't based on the fact that he's going to have a good day. Jesus' peace is absolutely present and guiding him even as he's looking to the cross and knowing that he's going to suffer. That he's going to feel real pain. And then the next few days for him are going to be excruciating. But his peace, his assurance is that God will never leave him. That he can always count on the fact that he is loved and held in the palm of God's hands. And he's saying to us and to the disciples in this moment, despite everything you see, whatever comes in the days ahead, here's the thing I want you to have, is the assurance that God's love is always with you. The Holy Spirit will be there to help you with that, but I will also be there, not in the physical sense that he's been up until this point, but he will be present, God will be fully present with them for all of the things that are to come. It's an amazing gift. And it is the one for me in my life that I look at and say that is what I believe, is whether it's a good day or a bad day, God is with me. And whether I've done things perfectly or not perfectly, God is with me. It's one of the things when I think about kids growing up in the church, our role is to pass that kind of peace on to the kids. Because the world is beating them up. 
Life is tough out there. And we, I know, we, we all walked uphill in a snowstorm to school, right? I only literally did it once. And that was because the bus dropped us at the bottom of the hill instead of the top of the hill when we went to my grandmother's house. And it was straight up. We think we had it tough, but each generation has their own struggles, their own places where people are challenging them, and the world indeed is ruled by a power that isn't God. The world we live in has Satan in it. It has evil. It has struggles. And there's nothing better that they would like to do is than each of us to feel like we're not worthy. For each of us to sell our souls to make someone else happy. For all of us to walk around in doubt of our worth. Because if that seed can be planted, we can lose our lives. But God's seed is the seed of assurance, the seed of peace, the awareness of no matter what somebody calls you, whether you have the right clothes on, the right hairdo, whether you're the right height, or just because you're the person they've decided to pick on today, the assurance is that you're loved. And one of the biggest things I remember growing up in the church was that I didn't just have my parents who loved me, I had the whole back row. And everybody in between. I had the other kids in Sunday school and the teachers that were part of it. And it wasn't just on a Sunday morning. They were people that I saw on the streets. They were people that I saw at school. And they never wavered in recognizing me as a person. That's what we do for each other. I hope that when we come to this space, when we see each other and even strangers, that we pass on that peace, that sense of assurance that that person is absolutely loved by God, whether they're doing all the right things this week or not. The truth is that I am dealing with the fact that I've just spent, and I don't know exactly when it started, but I've been in a battle with the powers of this world about peace. That somewhere in the last couple years I got into this thing, got stuck in my head, that my doing the right thing was based on whether everybody was happy. Have you ever seen everybody happy? But literally, for me, that sense of taking on that I was only right if absolutely everyone was happy and agreed with what I did up until this week was like carrying around a thousand extra pounds. Until I could realize that I was in battle with what the world calls peace. What the world calls peace is acceptance. I'll accept you if. I'll include you if. But Jesus says to his disciples, who he knows will run and hide... Peace be with you. My peace I give to you. I don't give it to, the, as, to you as the world gives it. He doesn't give it to the I'll give you peace if. Jesus gives us peace and assurance. He wants us to have that assurance of whether it's an easy day or a hard day. That he is with us. That he loves us and believes in us. Think about it. I think about what it would take for Jesus to walk with confidence to the cross. Let's talk about a hard day. 
Let's talk about what it does to have a people, crowds who go from shouting Hosanna to shouting crucify him. To think about what it does to physically be beaten within an inch of your life. And yet, the peace that Christ gives is the peace that he had, that he was doing exactly what he was supposed to do. As believers, we are given that gift. We don't have to check, is it a good day? Did God answer my prayers? Have I gotten everything I want? Does everybody like me? We don't have to say, did I keep every word of the Bible? Have I kept every letter of the law? Christ has given us peace in a world that can be chaotic. Our struggle is indeed to trust in that peace. To recognize that it isn't contingent upon anything. And I'll tell you that my story has been mostly that story. I've told you sometimes I've wore a clada or a wedding band since I was 14 years old. And it was that awareness. It isn't this world that gets to decide how I act. There is only one who gets to decide how I act. And that is God. Only his opinion matters. That doesn't mean that no one else matters. It just means that my foundation is strong. Our foundation is strong. We're still called to care for others. We're just not looking for our peace from the things of this world. Called you to have the confidence to stand up for Christ and to know regardless of what happens that you're okay, that you're strong and the world will be better for your faith. We can often get pulled into thinking about the world, trying to live up to the world, what the world calls us to. But our courage and our strength, our true worth, is given to us in the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, your assurance is larger than anything we can imagine. But I ask you, O oh God, for each of the hearts here in person and beyond, those around us, to indeed give them the assurance that they are okay, that their lives are precious to you, and that their, your presence is with them every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. I do invite you as we're going along, this, things will get busy we do have charge conference this Tuesday night. Uh, that information has been in the bulletin and online. If you want to come to that, it's at St. Luke's on Tuesday night. The other is um, we're getting ready for another trunk or treat. We've had so much fun with that. We need any candy you want to deliver. If you're not a night person or don't want to be standing outside, the first year it was warm. The second year, I think some people froze. So... It's a toss-up this year what the weather will be. If you don't want to be out, if you want to donate candy, because we see lots of kids for that, so there will be those. We also need people that are willing to come decorate their cars and have candy in their trunks to hand out. And this year, we had a few games last year. Our hope this year is to have a few more and kind of move back towards that fall festival kind of piece with a little few more things. So if you're willing to come operate one of those games outside or wherever we end up being, then we have lots of them all decorated, so we'd hope that you come and help with that. Um, go really fast. One of the things that is in my head, um, I started doing All Saints Day, which is the first Sunday in November, 
um, the last couple years, having people, giving people a chance to light candles for loved ones and remembering them. Um, I'm actually able to plan ahead a little bit <laughs> for a second. So what I'm going to say to you is I, we're going to do an All Saints service on that first Sunday in November. If you'd like to bring a flower, a picture, um, any trinket that you would like to sit on the altar along with the candles, I invite you to do that for your loved ones. And uh, we will take that time to remember that we are connected to one another way beyond this moment in time. There are lots of other things. The adult Sunday school started this week. I, I saw the cars and then I got in the building and I couldn't find any people. <laughs> it was like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's where they are. I'm glad that that's starting. We continue to have uh, children's Sunday school and we're glad for that and those that are helping. The ladies have their quilt show. If you haven't gotten tickets, you need to get tickets to the quilt show. Um, Char has them still. And, uh, or the pie show, whichever um, preference <laughs> is yours. <laughs> um, there will be pies um, each day and some great talks. Um, I've had the chance to see the honor quilts and listen to that story in the past. It's a, a great honor that there are people that do whatever they can to care and respect others. So lots of things going on. We hope that uh, you get involved if you can. And or just come and see what's going on. God is good, and all the time. Let's stand and sing out the closing song. Come, send your rule. Sir.